Hello, everybody. My name is Luis Solis. I'm the Director of Wellness and Outreach Services for the Daughters of Charity Services of San Antonio. Today, we are going to, the topic that we are going to be talking about is uh, the how to regularly monitor uh, blood sugar. And as you can see, the, the title of the topic is, why is it important to regularly monitor my blood sugar? Why is that important for people with diabetes? To control diabetes, a person has four tools. Those four tools are nutrition, physical activity, medication, and blood sugar monitoring. These tools are the, like the four legs of a chair. Each one of them is very important because, like in the case of the chair, if you cut one of the legs of the chair, the chair will fall. Same thing with uh, diabetes. If you use only nutrition and physical activity, but you don't follow the doctor's order with your medication and you don't check your blood sugar on a regular, uh, inter a regular intervals, it's the, like you are cutting one or two of the legs of the chair and the chair will fall. In the case of diabetes, you won't be able to control your diabetes the right way. But, um, so monitoring the blood sugar on a, regu in, on, on a regular intervals on a, on a following a routine is one of the main tools you have to keep your blood sugar under control. Uh, depending on the blood sugar level of the person, the person may have to check their sugar one, twice, three times, four times a day. Um, and that's very important. Another thing that is important as you check your blood sugar is to write them down in, in a logbook. In, in a notebook or in the logbooks that come with the blood sugar monitor when you buy it at the pharmacy. It is not enough to just leave the result in the memory of the machine, like many people do. They said, okay, when they come to me, I see a lot of people with diabetes, and when they come to me, they tell me, oh, if the, the results are in the memory, they are in my machine, and you can see them there. That's not good. Uh, it's better to see the blood sugar levels in the book because when you see it in the book, you see five, seven days of blood sugar checks, and that's going to give you a better picture of the diabetes of the person and the level of control instead of just looking at one result at a time, like when the person just leaves the results in the memory. So that's important. I tell people this is like having a, a, a puzzle. If, if, and uh, the puzzle comes depending on the, the size, a thousand pieces or 500 pieces, whatever. So if you see only one of those pieces, you don't know what the puzzle is or looks like. But when you put the pieces of the puzzle together, you'll see maybe a ship, maybe a, a plane, maybe different things. And that's exactly what we want about diabetes, to see the picture of the diabetes of the person. And, and that also, putting it together, that way it helps you to see the effects of the meals on the blood sugar. Uh, if the person is uh, engaged in physical activity, it lets you see how the physical activity is affecting the person, the medication, how it's working, the stress level, things like that. Uh, again, as I said, it's like having a picture of, the, of, of your diabetes. So what, also, uh, that's important because it will help your doctor to decide what adjustments to make in your meal plan, in the level of physical activity, or in the medication dose, and that's very important. Uh, because if the doctor doesn't, cannot see that the, the shift or the trend or, or how your blood sugars are, it will be very hard for the doctor to set up a good uh, medication dose. I mean, if the doctor only see a sugar here and a sugar there, um, it's, it's like being a hunter and the hunter goes uh, to hunt uh, and during the night doesn't see anything and you start shooting and see what you hit. That's what sometimes the doctor is trying to do with to setting up the dose of your medication. If you don't give him information, it's going to be harder for him to uh, set up a good dose. Um, also, it's going to help you to prevent and detect uh, when the blood sugar start going lower than what it should be, lower the normal levels, and you may have uh, reactions. And um, for the people that this on their insulin, treatment, well, then it also helps the doctor to set up good uh, amounts and good dose of insulin. 
Um, and especially in gestational diabetes, that means that when diabetes happens during pregnancy because um, during pregnancy the, the only treatment for diabetes is insulin. Uh, pregnant women cannot take pills. But uh, what are the normal levels of, um, blo of blood sugar? If we, those parameters, are, it depend, depends who you are talking to. For the American College of Endocrinology, fasting levels, normal fasting levels should be between 70 and 100. For the American Diabetes Association, it's a little bit higher, like 70 to 120. Um, but um, I think the, the way we are seeing a lot of people with diabetes now, it's better to think like the American College of Endocrinology thinks. So, so we say 70 to 100 is normal. Um, now we have another category that is called prediabetes, which is between 100 and 125 of blood sugar at, while fasting. We say that the person has prediabetes, which means that if a person doesn't do the correct things, such as good and healthy meal plans and regular exercise, the person is going to become diabetes. Uh, with uh, is going to hit. 126 and then the diagnosis of diabetes will come. Um, one hour after a meal, the normal blood sugar is less than 180. And two hours after a meal, the blood sugar level is 150 or less. Uh, at this point, if there are any questions, any, it's about just this short presentation, I'll be open to answer it.